we are functioning. Okay. All right. So you're going to need to make this male component that you can look at the tutorial again to um, figure out how to make. And we can also help you during office hours if you're really struggling, running into trouble. But you're going to need to make this male component based on the dimensions I gave you. So you're going to you're going to physically build the box, but you're also going to solid model the box in SolidWorks. All right. So um, let's assume that you've made the male component. Okay. Um, I want to show you a couple things. First thing is, um, I'm going to open a different file. So here's here's one I made. So this is a five by seven by three box. Okay, it's got the male part here. It's got the female part here. It's got screws here. And I'm going to change the visibility of the outside part to hide it and show you the back side. It has these little devices called PEM nuts, which are the nuts for the screws. I'm going to show you how to do those, and you are going to get those for your boxes. And you're also going to get screws for your boxes. Okay? So I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you... So I wanted to show you how I inserted those. So this is an assembly. I'm gonna bring in. I'm gonna bring in a screw. We did this a little bit yesterday, but we'll do it again. I'm gonna go to SolidWorks Resources. This thing focused as well as it can be. Um, not resources. Uh, design Library. Toolbox. Remember, it has this little Add In Now thing that you kind of have to do every time. So I'm going to click that and let it do its thing. God, this is just the worst projector. I'm fixing this this year. I apologize for this. It's terrible. We need a bigger projection and better colors. All right, toolbox. Add me in. Let's do it. Okay. I'm going to go to ANSI inch. Yeah, there's metric, and then there's all these other countries that nobody cares about. We want the American flag, inch, and we're going to go to bolts and screws. And I want, what do I want? I want machine screws, countersunk, I think. Yes. Your standard machine screw is an 82 degree flathead. You can buy 100 degree flatheads um, and they have a smaller projection. Oh, of course they don't have a marker. They have a smaller projection so you can put them in thinner material and they have a little bit more surface area so sometimes people spec those out. Your standard everyday average screw that you buy at the hardware store is 82 degrees. So I'm going to click one of those and I think you drag it or I think you just click it. Nope. I think you have to drag it. And then let it think for a second. And it should open up a property manager which asks you what what uh, what do you want on this screw? So the first thing is size 440. As Lee, what does the four and the forty mean? Correct. That's the pitch. Pitch. And when you say size, oh. no, no, that's right. Threads per inch is the pitch. Just wanted to give you the, the, oh. the name. When you say size for the number four, what do you mean by size? Is it how long it is? It's like the number. It's the nut. Uh huh. But what dimension is that on the screw? Is it how long the screw is? Um, yes. No. Correct. It's the diameter. That's what I was looking for. So number four is the diameter. It's number four wire gauge, which is a goofy old imperial uh, way to, to, to say diameters. And 40 is the pitch, which is given in threads per inch. Correct. Dustin. Uh, my, ah, got it. Yeah, um, why is that pulling up the configure menu? 
that you have mine is it's showing up in my in the display but didn't give me any prompt to um, try it again and try to back off the clicking. Try and drag it, let go, and not click because if you noticed on mine, it took a second for it to bring it up. Might be a processor or a graphics card issue. It'll be there. We'll figure it out. Okay, next thing you can pick is the length. So I picked this length, which is the decimal equivalent for 3 16 You can pick whatever you want, except for the fact that I think I'm going to give you I think I'm going to give you um, a certain length of screw. So don't worry about that in your model. But once you get the length of the screw, maybe you want to update your model. Who knows? They give you drive types. They only give you cross and slotted. That's kind of irritating because I like to use in aerospace applications um, hex drives. But uh, whatever. And then uh, thread length is how far up the screw that, that it's threaded. Some screws aren't threaded all the way. In this case, it is. And then you just hit select and or accept. And then you can you can zoom in on that screw and see that it's there. Okay. So this is kind of neat because that you got this whole toolbox of fasteners. It'd be a real pain that you could make this. You could solid model this, right? But why? You know? So they have a toolbox of really common stuff. So I wanted to show you that. I also want to show you something else that's kind of clever. These PEM nuts, they may be in that toolbox library. I haven't looked. They may be in there. But I'm going to show you another way. Okay, so here's this PEM nut thing. In fact, I'm going to open that. That's the PEM nut. Okay, and what a PEM nut does is it works for sheet metal. It's got this kind of um, grooved end. Um, it's called a knurled end. And what, what that does is it can press into a hole that you drill in the sheet metal and kind of hold in there. All right. And then when you, and then it's threaded on the inside. You see how it's threaded inside here? Then when you go to put that in the box, when the screw screws into here, those threads pull that PEM nut even harder into the material. So the little knurled end kind of just holds it in there and then the screw uh, makes sure that it's secured. So it's kind of a cool, it's called a captive fastener, which means instead of having a nut and a bolt that you have to put in with your hands and screw them together, the nut is captive in the piece. So it's stuck in the piece. Makes it a little bit easier to assemble. All right. I want to show you something cool. Um, if you go to McMaster Car, this is a really cool website. It, they're a broker brokerage house, so they they get all kinds of companies to advertise their products through them. They broker the products, but they're more of industrial kind of engineering type products. Okay, so it's a good place to um, go. There's other ones like Granger and MSC and other brokerage houses. McMaster Cars kind of a got a long, long history. So we kind of like them. They're a little more expensive than some other sites, but they're pretty convenient and they're pretty well documented. So I'm going to show you PEM nuts. I'm going to show you something cool. So if you type in PEM, there's PEM style nuts. PEM is actually called a manufacturer. These are called captive nuts. Um, and this always happens to me. There we go captive nuts okay rounded head broach style okay that's the kind of one I want and then if you look here I've got 440s okay I'm gonna click the part number and check this out product detail you see that what is this what's my water product detail check that out they have an engineering drawing Okay, so it has some specs. Most interesting one is it says it's for a 0.06 inch thin, thick minimum panel thickness. I actually, I think I gave some of you guys 50 thousandths thick, which is 0.05, but it'll still work. Don't worry about it. But that's an engineering design spec. Check this out. Go up to this little tab. You can get the 2D SolidWorks drawing. You can get the 2D DXF or DWG for AutoCAD. You can get a PDF. 
You can also get 3D models. Now, it's not for every product in McMaster Car, but you can get some. So let's pick a 3D SolidWorks. Save. Here it is. Let's see. Wait a minute. I guess I could just open it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go to my assembly. And then I can say insert component existing part. And then I need to go find that PEM nut. It's in my downloads folder. There it is. And there it is. How cool is that? All right. So McMaster Car doesn't always have that going on, but you should check. You should always check. So again, and they're, every day they're getting more and more of them. So click on the part number and then see if it's got this little product detail thing. And you might be able to save yourself a lot of time and energy and just drop in SolidWorks part files into your assemblies. So I wanted to show you that. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, we're going to close out of this thing. Maybe. Close out of this guy. We need to get rid of some of these solid workers. It's killing me here. Dragging my computer down. We'll talk about drawings for these things later. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't die on me. VLC, happy, happy. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, I did want to show you a couple of other things. That's why all that was open. Bad instructor. All right, so let's uh, let's open up uh, the inside and the outside again. Sorry for the delay. Just not paying attention. Okay, so there's my assembly. I'll rebuild it. I wanted to show you a couple other things. Um. Let me open just the, the inside part, the male part. And I wanted to show you the the holes or even the PEM features. Let's go let, let's do the PEMs. So go back to the assembly. So I had these, I'm gonna hide this guy. Alright, I had three PEM nuts over here, three PEM nuts over here, three screws over here, three screws over here. You could put all six in there if you wanted to but to save a little bit of time because I put the three in there and then I mated them to the hole that they're in I didn't want to do that six times it's kind of a pain so I did a mirror feature I put in the three here and then I mirrored them over to here and you can see that you can see that here um, let me select a there's three PEM nuts. See that? And then I hit mirror component and you see it highlights those three PEMs and I mirrored them over to there. Now how would I mirror those components? How am I going to tell SolidWorks I want those three nuts to be on that side? And then you click bodies to mirror, mm -hmm. and you click the pen nuts, and then on faces to mirror, you click the 
Okay. That I've never done that. Maybe that does work. I think that's what they did in the tutorial. Okay. Maybe that does work. Um, that's interesting. It could work. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. What's another way? So in order to mirror something, you have to have something to mirror about. So put a reference geometry. I'd have to put a reference geometry in here. What reference geometry would I use? An axis. It could be, an, I think an axis would work, and I think something else would also work. I would probably make a plane. A plane. A plane would work also. So where's that axis or that plane going to be? It's the center line right here. Okay, so you could insert some reference geometry and put an axis or a plane from the midpoint of that to the midpoint of that and mirror it across. I got to look into what you just said because I bet that does work and that's kind of cool. So in the sheet metal toolbar and mirror across a face. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll check that out. That makes sense. Because you can say, hey, these three things, I want them on this face and select it. That's, it probably could work. So I'll take a look. File that under the heading of you can get to the same place different ways in SOLIDWORKS. It's got too many options. So, but that's a good thing. All right. So I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you. So let's go to the inside part. And I want to show you a little bit more about design intent. So we know we want, we, we could do that mirror feature because we know no matter what we do with this box, we wanted those three PEMs on one side to mirror the other three PEMs on the other side, right? So by design intent, using that mirror function is okay. We're never going to change that. At least that's what I think. I mean, why would you, what? You, you want to have the, the screws on both sides of the box, okay? Now, I'm going to go to the cut extrude sketch I did for the holes. Okay, Another piece of design intent that I wanted for this part is I want three holes. I know that for every box that I have. And I want them to be in the middle of the little flange right here. I also want this hole to be in the center of this length and these holes to be kind of a defined or in the center of this length. No matter what I do with the box, no matter how big or small I make the box. So I want that to change with the box dimensions. So what I want to do is I want to change one of these dimensions and see what happens. Let's try this one. It says 0.26. Let's or 256. Let's make it uh, 0.75 and accept that. See how that's over there? Then I'm gonna get rid of the or rebuild the sketch. Then I'm gonna go back to the assembly and rebuild the assembly. It says models have changed. Would you like to rebuild the assembly? Yes, I do. And I want to unhide the female component. Look what happened. Clearly not what I intended to happen, right? The, the inside part holes moved with the dimension change. The female uh, holes did not move. Neither did the screws. Okay? That's not my design intent. I don't want that. I want it to be so that if I change anything on the box, it just shazam. It automatically updates both parts and the assembly and makes me a box that I can screw together. That's my design intent. And that's what I'm calling an adaptive part. So if you make one part, the other part adapts to change with the first part. Okay? That's, that's one kind of design intent. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. Like an example of when you don't is if you're if you have a system that you're designing and you're going to use a servo motor, let's say that you're buying from a company, you are never going to change that servo motor. Okay, you can't just change a dimension on a servo motor that you bought from a company. So you probably want to fix that servo motor 
as a as a design model and it would you, your parts would not adapt to that servo motor or the servo motor would not adapt to your parts so there are times you don't want adaptive parts you want to fix the part okay we're going to start talking about how to do adaptive parts in the context of this sheet metal box we're going to do that by um, using a way of building parts. So you can build parts individually and then insert them into an assembly, right? You can also build a part, insert it into an assembly, and then build another part on top of that part within the assembly. You see how that's different? We're going to do that today. Okay? So I'm going to start with this part. I, it's called Matt General Male Test. I'm going to start with that part. And it's a male part. Okay? I'm going to look at it normal view. Um, where are we? Okay, I made a mistake with this part and I want to show you the mistake. It's not really a mistake, but it's just kind of a rule of thumb that you should try and go by. Look at the base flange here I have, and then we're going to open the sketch. Okay, notice something odd that I did. I don't know why I did this. Notice I built the sketch and it's not on the origin. Nothing's touching the origin. That's okay, it'll work. But what happened is when I finished all this and I built the female part off of it and I wanted to extrude the female part off of it, which we'll get to in a while, because it was offset by that origin by like nine inches or something, nine, it was a crazy number, 9.6323, I just clicked in space. Okay, because it was offset, the, the, the female extrusion, it could go left and it could go right, but it was building off the origin, not off the nine point some inches away from the origin. So as a general rule of thumb, try and build your first part or your assembly or all your parts off the origin, just as a general rule of thumb. You don't have to, but it's going to help solve some problems down the road. Okay. Here's the magic. This is the trick. So pay attention to this. It's very tricky. It, it would have been hard to figure this out yourself. So I'm, I'm letting you in on a little sneaky trick. Pay attention. So I've got this part and I want to make an assembly out of the part. So I go to file, make assembly from part. I've got an assembly template. You can make your own if you want, or you can use the one from SolidWorks. And then it says, what component do you want to put into this assembly? And the one that's open is the one I want, which is this guy. So I clicked in the, in the window area, and I've got my part. Now notice, look up here. I've got assembly 6, assembly 6, and Matt General Mail Test. So I'm no longer in the part. I'm in an assembly. And if you look at the command manager uh, buttons, they're different from the part buttons. We're in an assembly. Okay, and if you look at the window, here's the assembly and here's the part. They're different, all right? So always kind of know where you're at, what you're doing. All right, that's the first piece of magic. And this has confused me many, many times, so pay attention to the magic. All right, we're going to make this female part off of this part. So this female part will always reference the male part and if we change the dimensions of the male part the female part will just adapt okay so we have to do it in the assembly and this is this is the magic right here this is it we're going to insert a component a new part because we haven't made one yet pick whatever part template you want i'm going to go ahead and use the um SolidWorks default, whatever. You could use yours. It dropped that in there. Do you see it? It says part five of assembly six. 
And but I'm still in assembly six. I'm not in the part. I'm in the assembly. But it did drop that part in there. Sooner or later, we're going to have to save that part. So we haven't saved it anywhere. But we haven't made it yet. So let's not save it. All right. Here is the super trick. Go to this part. And then I have to click in click I have to click in the assembly uh, window in order do whatever you got to do to get to that part right click it we need to have this menu of options show okay open part edit part here is the trick if I hit open part it's going to open up a new screen with that part and I'm going to leave my assembly It'll still be open, but I'm going to leave my assembly and start looking at my part. You could do that, but we don't want that. We want to see our assembly because we're going to build our part or off this assembly. So you want to go to this option, edit part. That will allow us to be making the part, modeling the part, but within the assembly and make it able for us to see this original part. So we want to hit edit part and watch what happens. Now I'm in part five in the assembly six. I still haven't made a part at all, but I can see this part, which was my original one, Matt General Mail Test. That's the magic. Don't forget it. Hopefully VLC will work and you can you can look it up on YouTube if you forget. Okay? That's that's huge. Now look at this little button over here. This shows this is the assembly uh, button. It shows one little part and another part on top of it. And then it shows this arrow. So if you click this arrow, you will go back to the assembly. I'm in part five. I'm editing part five in the assembly. If I click this, I'll go back to the assembly. Okay? Magical, I'm telling you. Magical. All right. Now we're in this part. We're going to start building this part. Yes? Oh, I just missed one step. Uh, how did you actually open the part in that assembly? How did I open the part in the how assembly? Did, how did you create the new part? Yes. So I, I went insert. Oh, okay. Um, now, I can't do that from this menu because now I'm in part five. I'm not in the assembly. So... I'm going to hit this button to return to the assembly. Now I'm in the assembly. And then I can hit insert component new part. Insert component new part because we're going to build a new part. All right. I already did that, so I'm not going to do it. Now I'm going to go back to part five and do the magic trick. Right click, edit part. That's the magic. Okay. So we're going to build our new part off of this part. So remember, the design intent is, hey, I'm going to build this part and sketch it out, and then it's going to refer to the mail always. So think about that as we're doing design intent, okay? Um, but we still have to build a part. It's still this female, you know, U-shaped box, right? So we have to build a sheet metal part, and we, we're going to build that sheet metal part the exact same way we built this male sheet metal part, which you learned in your tutorial yesterday. So we have to start with a sketch that will then become our base flange, and then we'll bend up the edges around that, right? All right, so the first thing we have to do is our sketch, and this is where the adaptive magic happens. So we'll open a sketch. And it says select a plane. We want this plane. So we want to be looking at this guy. Notice I'm in sketch. Sketch one of part five. Okay. And we need to make our uh, base flange sketch, which is a U. Right. We make the U and then it extrudes it out into our solid works or our uh, sheet metal part. Okay. So we're going to make a U shaped. We're going to do that with lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and click lines. Any old way out here, SolidWorks is going to put some automatic relations into there. I don't really care at this point. So I made my U, and I made it around the male part because that's how the female part uh, connects. Okay. Now, let's go to our display delete relations all in this sketch. Those are all the relations in this sketch. 
I'm going to kill all these because I didn't want the inherent ones that SolidWorks uh, put in there for me. So I'm going to delete all those and I'm going to add my own. All right. Now, again, this is where I asked you to always think about design intent. We need to think about what we care about. When I change the male part, if I change this length, what do I want to change about that length? This is like three inches. If I made this five, do I want this female one to stay at three? I want it to increase to five. And not only that, I want the middle of this line to line up with the middle of this line so that I can define my holes off that middle and the holes will always line up. All right. And the same goes for this and the same goes for this. So could anybody guess how I'm going to force this line and this line to always line up on their centers, on their midpoints? How would I force those two lines to line up on their midpoints. Add a relation between what? Centers. Centers. The midpoints. So I want my midpoints to be related in some way so that they're always going to change together. All right. Well, first of all, I got a problem here. I don't have midpoints on anything. I got to get some midpoints on there. So I'm going to go into sketch and I'm going to hit this point. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. I want to get a point on my midpoint. So hover over it until you see it. There it is. Click it. I'm going to go down to this guy. Hover over this guy. Now, careful. Don't drag that down. That SolidWorks is guessing, hey, you want a point vertical with that one. That's not what I want right now. Right now, I want the midpoint of this line. So make sure you get the midpoint of that line. You'll know because it'll say midpoint. See that? Okay. Now I'm going to back up and I'm going to do this midpoint too. I want this length to be the middle too. So I'm going to grab that middle and I got to find this middle. Do, do, do. Oh, there he is. Okay. And then I'm going to zoom in here and get these guys. Gotcha. And oh, there he is. Gotcha. So I got all my midpoints. Okay. There's one other design intent thing I want here, and that is, look at how it looks now. Do we want our female box to extend way over our male box, or do we want it to line right up there? So we want this edge to line right up with that edge. So we need to relate those two. We'd like this point to always relate to that point, but this is a point right now and this isn't so we have to add a point on there so i'm going to put a little point i'm going to put a point now be careful see this thing it has a bend see that so if i'm not careful i'd put a point there that's not where i want my female part to start stop i want it to stop right there so be careful and that's where you want to use your your view tools your zoom tools Bring it over here, and I want to point right there. I want that female to stop right at the end. Okay. I'm going to zoom in and get this one, too. Gotcha. Okay. All right, I got all my points. Now I need to start relating them. I'm going to exit my sketch tool. Now I need to start relating them. So I'm going to go to Display, Delete Relations. Now, if I was to display them, I should see some relations, right? Midpoint, 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 midpoint. You see how these are highlighting? Midpoint, midpoint. That's what I wanted. Coincident, coincident. Those are the ones on the edges. So those are all correct. And there's no additional ones that I didn't care about. So we're cool there. All right. We want to start relating these things. So I want this midpoint and this midpoint to always be collinear. Midpoints are always on midpoints. That way if the mailbox expands, the female box will expand. So I'm going to click all those midpoints. Click. Oh, oh. No, I'm not. I'm going to hit add relation first. And it says, what entities do you want to relate? I want to do this dot, this dot. 
that midpoint, that midpoint. All those guys. What relation do I want there? Vertical. Collinear is okay, um, but collinear is different than vertical in that collinear could be canted at an angle. So it's, SolidWorks is assuming you want vertical because you've defined this box to be vertical in this axis. That's why it doesn't give you collinear. It's making an assumption. All right, we got that one. Uh, what else do we need? We need these two, right? But look, it's already selected the other four points, so i got to clear the selections. So I'm going to go over here and get this midpoint and this midpoint and make them horizontal. See how it forced it? Accept. Uh, one more. What is it? Endpoints. Add relation. Let's get this guy. Let's get this guy. Let's get this guy. Let's get this guy. Vertical. Now check this out. Look what happened. This line blackened up, which means it's fully defined. You can't move it anymore. It's because of all those relations we put in. Okay. If you thought about it for a while, you'd figure out why. Because of these verticals and horizontals, it just can't. It can't move. So we can. A um, couple more things we need to do. I could take this line and I could drag it around. I could. You see, I'm dragging that, but look what's going on at the bottom one. That's not right. Right? So, I don't ever want this to happen. So, what do I need to do to this line? Make it horizontal. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to hit add relations and I'm going to click this line horizontal and I'm going to add a relation to make this line horizontal and now they're forced horizontal. They're still blue so I can drag them. So look at me dragging now here see. Now we don't ever want this to happen. But we also don't ever want that to happen. So we've got to do something to make it exactly how we want here. Okay. At this point, we don't want a relation. At this point, we want to think about the material properties and what this is doing. All right. So we want this box to be a certain distance away, the female to be a certain distance away from the uh, male. So in this case, we're going to want a dimension. So we'll actually dimension this this time. And I picked, what did I pick? So I think what I did was I looked here and I hit measure. So this was fixed. And I measured in between and I got 0.081. That 081 was forced because of the bend radius of the material. It's a 50 thousandths inch thick sheet and the bend radius was 31 thousandths. 50 and 31 is 81. So that, you don't have to know why or know that, but that's why that is. So if you were to twist this around, you get it. Here's the 50 thousandths of the material and here's the 30 thousandths bend. So that forced that that forced that distance away to be that 80, uh, 81. Okay. So you get to determine, well, how far away do I want my female to be away from my male? You, you shouldn't make it zero. Otherwise, you're going to have that press fit thing that we just talked about. And we want, and, 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 and these bends are not exactly precise, and it's a little bit of an art to make them. So we want a little room for error, okay? So we want to make some, some space in there, something reasonable. Um, I can't remember what I did. I think I did 88, the same as this one. I think I did the same as that one, or even a little bit bigger. So I went to Sketch, Smart Dimension, and I think I'm going to dimension this. 
at let's say 85 or we could do the 81 but let's let's just say 85 now I'm fully defined I can't move it and if you go down here and look at this and measure this this should be the same because those midpoints are forced to be together so it forces those distances to be the same which is your design intent you want the left and the right to be symmetrical okay so we we forced it to be that way around midpoints now let me be clear when you build your boxes you do not have to do this why they're not going to change you're only building one box so you can build this box just standard based on the sheet metal tutorial but I wanted to show you how you could build a box that could be a general box where you just go in and change three dimensions and boom new box new model okay wanted to show you how to do that because it's a powerful design intent tool all right cool um, there we are okay so let's ex exit the sketch we made this sketch and now we have to make that sheet metal part of that sketch so I exited the sketch and I should be able to go to features base flange right because that's how you built your sheet metals so I think you have to hit base flange and then you have to tell it hey how far are we going bud all right and you know what I forgot how long this box was wasn't it like eight and a half inches it was some goofy number Can you just extrude up through base? yeah you could you could um, we could do that you can go to up to surface and then you could so we got a problem here we're going the wrong direction so to fix that direction you go up to this little direction reverse direction number and it goes that way and then you could go up to surface and pick that surface and there you go there's your at least your base flange now let's just make sure that we have some slop there okay let's just make sure that works so we're gonna accept that but then we're gonna go in and kind of use some evaluation tools and make sure that's what we wanted okay so if you look at that is that what we wanted it is right on that surface right and then we're gonna have to put in to make that female look like the females we had we're gonna have to put in these these ears right so what I'm a little worried about is when we put the ears in they won't be offset from the box but we'll we'll check that out the other thing is I want to look here we want some space in here we want some room in there so that it'll work so that we we have some room for error do we have it yes do we have it over here yes so good that worked so yeah instead of doing numbers sometimes you can just pick off of other components which is why we're building it in the assembly off another component so that we can select off that component if you were to build this part by itself you wouldn't be able to have those options so this is a very powerful tool okay so I'm pretty happy with that if I click this I can go back to the assembly I'm still in the part um, how are we doing here are we done we go till 1055 we got four more minutes um, let's try and see if we can add our base bends so if you remember from your sheet metal tutorial you go into uh where where is it is it base bends uh, edge flange right not a miter edge flange right and then we can go in here and we select uh, I forget which one it is is it this guy 
I think you're supposed to select a, is it a face? No, it's edge. So I can't remember which edge though. Let's just try it. Does it matter which edge you? It probably doesn't. So and then it asks me which way you want to go and I'm dragging this way. So that's fine. I can drag that way. And then I can pick the other edges too. Right? Okay, there's those. And I can't remember if you can do the other side too. Or if you have to do a different edge flange. Let's try it. Yep, it's cooperating. So let's do all six of them. Come on now. Okay, so there's all my edges. And then I need to set them to be what I want them to be. I forget what it is. I feel like I'm feeling like a half inch was the right number. Um, but you'll have drawings to, to play around with that. So flange length, I'm going to put it 0.5. I mean, you're going to still want that adapted, right? Um, we did not. Because that's where the screws are going through? Is from, through the yeah, and that's why we don't want it adaptive, because we chose a half inch so, such that that number four screw with its head could sit in the center and be kind of centered and have enough material to be big enough, but not too big. So if you notice, they're the same. Okay. We didn't want we didn't want those flanges to adapt. You don't want to end up with a box that's got a flange that's four inches out here. That's goofy, right? So in this case, we, we didn't want that to adapt. So we hard we hard coded that at 0.5, I believe, and then everything else looks good to me, right? Bend radius at this um, 03125, which is that default. Um, and SolidWorks, based on the thickness of the material, it gives you a bend radius. You can change that, but um, that's pretty good for our machines. SolidWorks, is, it's been pre-programmed with reasonable numbers for manufacture. Okay, so there's, we'll accept that, and there is the blank for our female. Now, here's the point where you can go back to your assembly, and you can go to your part, and that's where you should probably save your part at some point. So you don't lose it. If you, I was working with mine in basketball and just ate it in the assembly. You can do that. You can do that too. Yeah. But you can save it out of the assembly, in the assembly, either way. All right. We're going to call that good for now. Can you go back through adding those screws that you 